Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. Today, I was given the wonderful opportunity to be able to catch up with Blake. Now, Blake is a part of our little circle of creatives that go out whenever we can to create and just to chat, to catch up and, you know, sort of help each other's creative journeys and etc. as well. But it was also great to hear um, his perspective on Brunner Media as well. So thank you ever so much for him if you're listening back. And thank you so much for you for coming back and listening to the podcast once again. I will be back next week with a brand new episode and someone very very special and very exciting i'm sure and uh, i'll see you very very soon hope you have a fantastic week and uh yeah i'll see you soon i'll let now hand over to blake to uh explain a little bit more about what he does um so hi my name is frankie james blake um and i'm a photographer in salisbury um my instagram is camera shy 2020 Okay, so hello, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you ever so much for coming on. I uh, really appreciate the time, as always. And um, you know, I think for me, the the initial like starting point is sort of, I mean, obviously there's going to be the generic questions of like, how did you get started? So I mean, let's start with that. I mean, like, how did you get into photography? Like, what are your, I guess, your specialties or things that you you feel personally are like your your cup of tea, so to speak, when it comes to photography. Um. So. I'd say I was always interested in photography. I wouldn't say like as a kid. Um, that that was a whole different thing I was interested in. Um, but as I started, um, so I took art as GCSE um, at school, and I really liked the whole creating. Um, I took drawing really seriously, um, and as I went into college again, I did more um, art courses. Um, and by then, when we were doing drawings and stuff, you would like take photos and do that sort of stuff. And normally, for me anyway, when I wanted to draw something, I'd always use a photo for reference. And it kind of came about how I was like, well, what if there's not a photo of something I want to draw? How am I going to do it then? And I was like, well, I'll go out and take the photo. And once I started doing that, I was like, Hey, this is pretty good so I took it a little more seriously I kind of brought it up to the level that I was doing my drawing and um, I was just using my phone at the time um, which is why you know as good as it is to have a camera as long as you're starting out and like working from the ground up honestly like having a phone is not that much of a big deal um, you can really learn a lot from it and from progressing to like a phone to a camera I feel that's quite good in its own respect because you kind of reached the peak of what your phone can handle and now you're just naturally moving on. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I'm really glad you did mention that because I think there's a misconception a lot of the time, especially when people start with photography. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, I've got a phone. How do I start? But the thing is, what you'll learn with a phone is you'll learn lighting, you'll learn composition, and you won't need to worry about what is my shutter speed? What is my aperture? What is my ISO? I said, you won't need to worry about that. And then when you, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, the camera I have is, has its certain limitations and is it, is it the ceiling? Is it the thing that's stopping me from creating? No, absolutely not. You can always create with anything if, you, if you've got a phone, but the, is it what you want to create? Does it become easier if you have a higher piece of kit, right? For example, if I've got a camera that can autofocus faster than I can, then I'm going to hit get more photos, right? So, you know, one of our mutual friends is Chris. He he has a quite a high-end Sony camera that has very good autofocus, right? So arguably, if we were both on the same lenses and we were having a photo shootout, more of his would be in focus because his autofocus is going to be able to keep up because it's newer tech than, say, for example, what myself or Blake's using, right? But the, the, the point there is actually not it's in certain scenarios, like if you're doing sport or you're doing high action stuff, then yes, having a good autofocus camera would be really, really valuable. But in stuff where your subject's not going to go anywhere, like shooting the cathedral or shooting around town or street or etc., as long as you have different autofocus or even like you know how to manually focus, like you can take your time, especially if it's in like a controlled environment where you're shooting a model or you're working with your, you could be your friends or etc where you can like retake the photo over and over and over again till you're happy is is one of the main things and i think people who i mean let me throw it back to you i mean do you shoot 
manual what like like do you shoot auto do you, like not in just focus but in general like settings wise like ha, like what it what what kind of stage do you feel you're at like are you still shooting like aperture priority or something there's nothing wrong here right just to be clear there's no there's no wrong answer here i'm just curious because for me i learned manual deliberately because i wanted to understand every single thing i was changing and how it changes my image right so but of course you had that learning curve at the start especially you start on manual where you have to learn all the settings and you get worse and worse images until there's that kind of tipping point where you understand everything well for me uh from the get-go it was all manual um i only normally use auto now if it's on um my 55 to 250 mil just because i don't know if i have to clean or something but well, my vision is just awful now, but it's just getting a bit like it's all that it's all that squinting. Yeah, yeah. Camera, but, like, um, that's, what, that's what's going on there, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> but no, from the start, really, it was all manual. Um, uh, what I will say though is, moving on from um, your your previous question about like how I got into it. Um, so after the phone thing, um, I was really lucky enough to get uh, for Christmas a little Canon power shot. I um, mean, that was all auto, like, it was just a fixed, you know, everything was there. Um, so, of course, from that sense, it would have been, well, yes, I would have been using auto. But when you've gone from auto and having that restriction to manual, it's like, oh, my God, like, depth is my friend now. Um, and, again, like, for your second question, um, I, w I still like shoot an aperture's priority as much as I can. Um, I did try and break out of it because depth of field is one of those things that like you search up photography and it's drilled into you that you know it has to be at like one point whatever like the lowest it can go. Um, but I've recently found that actually switching it up a bit and maybe going just that bit higher and um, to have more in focus it kind of makes you think about the background a lot more and therefore like you can kind of position your subject a little better because you're having to take in the consideration so it's kind of like the best of both worlds so you know you kind of have everything in focus but you still have that little element of what you want in focus if that makes sense so yeah yeah absolutely i mean i think it's it's one of those things where i think most photographers or videographers they need to learn to shoot every setting right like there's some scenarios where especially if your subject's gonna be moving around a lot where unless you're really on point with like moving your focus or like your camera's actually got very good autofocus and video for example then you're not gonna you're just not you're not gonna be able to keep up so that's when stopping down is is valuable because basically for those who don't know and, and maybe listen to podcasts who are new who new to, are new to photography the the higher theoretically your f-stop or the lower the number so f 1.8 2.8 to etc the thinner your depth of field is going to be so the amount of things in focus is going to be less but it's going to give that professional feel the professional look in the respect to you know that's the, the you know a client said to me as well you know uh, you know why do you shoot on depth of field and, and and how do you shoot you know we were talking about have blurry backgrounds and stuff and i was like well it, it it's when you want to really isolate your audience to look at a specific thing that you're in control of right but the thing is, in in some scenes, you won't you will want them to actually be able to see a lot of the scene because, depending on compression and depending on what lens you're shooting on, etc. As well, and depend on the scene, you don't necessarily always want to completely blur out that background. It depends on again, it just depends on the scene, depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. But I mean, do you have like a, a speciality or those things that you really really want to that you know shoot of because. It, when everyone starts out they're like i'm a photographer i take photos okay cool but then but then you start getting into like you know yeah everyone should try all the niches in the world you know you do portraiture you do you do landscapes you do products you do this 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 this. but i think for everyone um you know in our circle but in general there's always going to be a point where you go no actually i want to get a lot better at and i'm going to start specializing in products i'm going to start specializing in portraits i'm going to start specializing in landscapes i'm going to actually not do photos at all i'm going to start doing video more for example um i mean have you do you have like a speciality or things that you want to be a spe not necessarily that are right now but may want to become a speciality in say six months to a year um i think at the moment um 
it's product photography, uh, 100%. Like, every opportunity I get, I'm like, oh, can I borrow that ring? Can I borrow that watch? Like, I, again, I just really enjoy, like, setting it all up because it's like its own little, like, I went, well, sometimes it's like its own little story, but again, going back to like the depth when you're like telling your audience, like, no, you're going to look at it. You kind of have to perform to a certain level where it's like what they're looking at is really good. I really enjoy picking out little bits and like the detail and like macro and stuff like that. And I think moving forwards, um, I really want to do a lot of car photography. Um, and that kind of links with the product, I guess, like if it's for like a, a new car or something. But, um, as a car person myself, I'm kind of, kind of like combining the best of both worlds. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely moving forward. So it will be something to focus on in that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think it's one of those things, as I say, like you'll find that as you start enjoying a certain thing, especially if you have an interest in a certain thing, like, you know, I imagine you have an interest in products, you have an interest in cars, you have an interest in the things you want to shoot as well. Mm. So, you know, it's not always about like this is my specialty, but you know, in most cases, if you're going to go into something correctly or you're going to go into something the right way for the long term, mm. it's because you want to mm -hmm. do it, right? Mm. In the same way, when I went into video, I didn't necessarily see it as a job at that time. Yeah. I went into video and I started video because I enjoyed creating content, I enjoyed talking to an audience, I enjoyed performing um, and telling a story, mm. right? And you know, arguably, we're telling a story here today. Mm. You know, we're telling the story and and, and etc. So, you know, and talking and connecting with other people is something which I enjoy doing yeah. so that through, through the natural progression of doing it more and more and more you then get to a point where you get better and better and better at it I mean what I mean if you could choose like a dream project or a dream photo or a dream like concept mm. to do do you, do you have one I think I do I really really want and do you want to reveal to the audience to yeah I think what that is <laughs> I'm like, just gonna leave it was... now I've got a dream Colin I've got a dream yeah, yeah. but um yeah I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> nah. um I always imagine like in a way I guess like everyone kind of has their own like I've made it like that doesn't necessarily mean fame but like you've achieved it's a, it's a benchmark for your definition of the word success right because everyone's a, a, everyone is that's what i mean everyone's different right everyone everyone's definition of the word success is you know some people see it as i have this monetary valued activity right i have this monetary valued thing others see it as i have the freedom to do whatever i like every day right so yeah but uh, let me throw it back to you yeah i think it just be waking up and like getting a call from like bentley or like audi or bmw or even if it's just some like guy with a car like yeah i'll be quite content when when that starts happening um i'd love to go to uh like um car meets and like track fees and things and i think if there's one like specific dream like project as such uh, it'd have to be uh going to like somewhere like japan and, and because their car community is massive like from you know years ago to like even now i'm sure it's still prominent um so it'd have to be getting paid to like go down there and take photos of cars or, or something like that but yeah i mean and that could change like down the road i could probably think well actually no, what if I got a call from like, I don't know, some watch company and they're like, oh, you know, we have this watch that's not out yet. Do you want to get a photograph? And I'd be like, yes, please. But please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Here's why not? my address. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I think it's one of those things that changes, right? Like my definition of the word success four years ago or three years ago or two years ago will be completely different to my definition of the word success now, right? Like I'm arguably doing everything I wanted to do three years ago, right? I wanted a podcast. I have a podcast. I wanted a production company. I have a production company, you know, uh, arguably a successful one at that. You know, I have I have all those things. So then the question becomes, okay, well, what now? And the, and the thing is, and, uh, and you know, and people and people say this to me a lot is like, you know, okay, well, when you obtain that goal, that vision, that want, right, then what? Well, you've got two options. Either you become content with what you have or you dream bigger, right? So 
in most cases i've dreamt i've, I've dreamt bigger um but also you know as, as you know from the conversations we've had but also you know in other content as well i've talked about it as well but you know for me brand media is now becoming more of a community effort in the respect to the team and, and, and how we're doing it and what we're doing it's less about me now um because it yes of course it has to sustain me it has to right it's my job it's, it's the thing i do to make a living yes of course but also it's also a percentage of other people's livings as well now it's not just me and that and that, and, and that was a very different change for me and a very different um belief i mean the question that i asked sam and will ages back when they first came on the podcast and that's what i'm going to ask you is you know outside of the conversations we've had i mean what is your perception of Brunner Media, what is your like when you think Brunner Media, what do you think? Uh, and the reason I'm asking is because it helps me really understand what is it we're doing, what is it we're putting out, how we put it out, and is the perception going to be similar, right? Because we've talked about it before between us about you know, you, you knew of me before you knew me. Um, well, the whole like knowing of you, it would be like video all the way, like um, business, for, like souls who. Um, I knew I knew back then that you'd like cover some events here and there, um, but obviously, like as we've been talking, and even even before then, like seeing what Sam and William are doing, and like listening to them talking about it, like like you said, it is more about like from my opinion anyway. It's like it's how you're gonna market it, your brand. It's like oh yeah, I can take photos for it, but like how's that gonna benefit your business um and again with the whole community thing obviously you take it on salmon women um it is like when we had that meeting in sonda and you we were talking about like where it's going to get i have no doubt that's where it's going to go because it, it just seems natural at this point like it is just going to become this massive like community um like yeah, team, I guess you could call it. But yeah, from the get-go, it would have been video and then moving forward, it would have been like marketing and things like that. And I think that, um, I guess if people take the time to look at that and like, obviously people can consume content like all the time, it's everywhere. Um, but I think once you like start like really understanding, like yes, you're taking a, a video for a business, but I think even for myself, it was like, okay, that's cool. But I never thought about, well, actually, hold on a second. That's actually going to be beneficial in like more ways than just, you know, having a bigger portfolio, developing your skills. You're like, kind of, how do I word it? It's kind of like a 50 50, like you're getting something out of it, but you're also making sure that the business is that you're providing a service to also like you know the whole point of taking photos with someone is like gain an audience and attraction to them and i think with you like sitting down with them being like this is what we're going to do this is how you're going to release it this is how like all that sort of stuff i think um yeah it's a really a really powerful like foundation you've got going on and yeah like i said i have no doubt that moving forward um, it will just explode I mean, the, the, I mean, the, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people, they talk about content and they talk about video, they talk about photos, they talk about images, they talk about being visual and being, you know, really visual in the respect to how they go about their brand and how they go about their branding. The reason why I like to ask people what what their perception of brand and media is, is that's what we're talking about. We're talking about brand there. Everything, everything you just discussed is brand because yes, I'm here, but I hope, I hope you answered the question as if I wasn't because that's the point of branding that's branding that's what branding is branding is this is this thing that people talk about when you're not in the room right because you can't manipulate it you can't you can't tweak it you can't change it and that's why i didn't say anything when you were saying it because i didn't want to jump in and 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 tweak and tweak how you were saying it because it's really important especially people who are looking to build their brand so maybe they're you know starting out photographers or they're starting out in the in the industry or, or they're trying to build a presence that you need to understand that it's not actually just about you it's about the actions you make how you uh, and when you open your mouth it's about you're telling the world what you are right it's not it's not what you want to be it's not what you could be it's what you are right and the second you change your mindset on it's what you are and not what you could be or are planning to be or going to be even if you've been in business 5 days you still are a business owner 
in the same way I am a business owner. I'm just a business owner with four years experience. You're just a business owner with five days experience, for example, in this analogy, right? So it's not about I'm a better business owner than you. No, I've just had four years on you. That's the only difference. So then the question comes, okay, well, how can you surround yourself with people who are ahead of you to, so that are going to help you? Because the majority of this community will always help. But will always help. Because we want, for personally for me, I want as many people to be able to do what they love for a living. Period. That's my goal. That's my that's my that's my drive now. That's my driven. And the thing is, you know, a lot of the times when I wake up and I don't necessarily want it because everyone everyone can wake up and do what they feel is great or what they feel is really really useful to their business when they're motivated. The difference between people who can do it every day and the people who necessarily can't are the ones who have discipline. And this is the difference between discipline and motivation. I'm never motivated ever. I'm always disciplined now because. The difference between the two, if you rely on when you're motivated, you'll only work three days out of the year because you're only going to be motivated for three days out of a year. But if you rely on discipline and building habits and routines, what will happen is you will eventually just, your your body will just know what it we're doing, right? We'll wake up at the same time, we'll have the same routine, we'll go and do this. Like, that's part of the reason why the office is valuable for me, right? Like, most people know I feel on the podcast at home, but the majority of the reason why I'm at the office a lot of the time is because that's my, from a psychological perspective, that's my work area, that's my workspace, right so the whole point of that is during my wake up process and when i wake up in the morning uh, the whole point is i've built it so and i've designed it so i can hype myself up and get myself ready to absolutely demolish the day in respect to the amount i'm going to get done or the amount of things i'm going to do and i don't mean that in like i'm going to beat you as a competition perspective no the only person i check in with or, or check to see who's ahead is me five years ago, me two years ago, me three years ago, me six months ago. And that's why I say to most people, there's no such thing as competition. Because as a service provider, people buy you, right? And so there isn't so, so there isn't another Blake, right? There isn't another Colton, there isn't another Sam, there isn't another Will, there isn't another Chris, there isn't another any, anyone. They're, they're, we're all different people and we'll tackle things differently. And the, I'm very lucky and I'm very fortunate to have the, the set of freelancers I have in my network and the people who work we work very closely with. I'm very, very lucky because they're all very different people and they're all, and they have very different skill sets. And that gives me a massive load of choice when it comes to projects and who to bring on and etc. And you know, I was just I was just I've just, just come from a team meeting um uh, this month as well where we were talking about that as that thing. You know, we were we were saying, look, this is why I'm bringing so and so on, and this is why I'm doing this, and so I treasure because it's about bringing in the right people for the right job. I mean, uh, from your side, have you sort of seen a, a kind of progression in the creative community? Because I know you kind of came up with Sam and Will in respect to like where that creative community was, because obviously you were connected through through your own friendship circles, but then you sort of came into the you know how's the Salisbury community, so the creative community kind of helps you in your growth. I mean, or ha- or has it? You know, I don't want to assume that it has, but you know, I, I just hope it has anyway. Yeah. So, like you said, like when I was at college, um, Sam and William were the two main people on the course that were actually there to learn, and. Um, you know, you see loads of photographers on Instagram, like you can walk like through Salisbury and see like loads of them. But to have someone or two people rather that you're interacting with on a daily basis, yes, you can message people over Instagram, but actually like sitting down, having a conversation and just watching them like do what they do um, is extremely beneficial. I highly recommend to anyone even if you do message with Instagram, like, just try me up, like, it doesn't have to be anything insane, like, even if it's just, you know, going to grab coffee, taking a walk around the cathedral grounds, like, it's so valuable to talk to someone, because, like, yes, we're all photographers, we all get it, you know, I have loads of respect for everyone who creates, like, it doesn't matter what it is, like, because I'm a creative person, you are, you know, but I think until you kind of look from the outside in and even like get in the box, so to speak, have a look around, see who's about, see what they're doing. I think that's really valuable. And then obviously throughout summer, um, obviously you came into the picture, you know, um, I think they like followed you on Instagram or something and they were like, oh, like, you've seen this, like, you've been doing, like, 
um, video production you can like filter and stuff like that um, and then through then like Chris was on Instagram and then we met and then we kind of yeah we're kind of like this group now and even like outside of that like um, going to like coffee shops and asking for photos even if they say no it's still like it's nothing you should take like personally I guess the word is because at the end of the day like you know I was starting out like as long as you accept that yeah people are going to say no it makes that one yes so much better and you work so much harder on that because it's like okay this they've given me a shot let's not like waste it yeah let's not um, yeah let's not waste it I mean I think for me anyway the main thing there is like I don't think people actually fully appreciate how many no's you have to go through to get the first yes, right? Like, at the start, when you're no one, right? Maybe it's a bit different after you build a brand and, and, and et cetera, and you've, like, got content going out and you build yourself a reputation and you've got clients and you've got this and you have this kind of clout, then fine, because that's different. You've built the clout, you've earned it, right? Great, fabulous, well done, good job, right? But at the start, you're no one. No one knows you. And the thing is, I will always help those businesses, whether I like um, above their price point, below their price point, under their price point, whatever it is. I don't even care about price when it comes to those clients because those clients are the reason I have a business. They're the reason why I'm able to do what I do. They took a ga- they took a gamble on me because I was a kid with a camera who had an idea, right? Three or four years ago, right? I uh, and that's why I you know I do my very best to support everyone who I can because you guys are no different to me three four years ago right the only difference between is i've had three to four years of just relentless work that there's nothing more against it and you know there's a there's about thousand motivational quotes you could use here but it's that that's the fact of the matter is how are you stacking the probabilities against you are you sending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages a month you know if you're not why not what, what, what's the hurdle there because the only reason why you're going to make the progression you're going to make is because you're ruthless right and you're ruthless with the trying and if you fail and you fall get up every time keep going learn you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna make problems we get those mistakes out of the way i still make mistakes every single day but i learn from them i still make mistakes and it's a completely different level of like mistake i've, I've had to learn a completely different skill set with bringing on sam and will and, and luke and etc you know I've, I've had to bring on a completely different skill set because i've not just had to then learn how to deal with clients and how to deal with large amounts of money and larger projects and larger and how to sell those larger projects and how to market those larger projects etc but i've also then had to deal with a team and all the all the all the fun that comes along with that and don't get me wrong i'm, I'm very 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 grateful to have the team i have and i'm very very grateful to have the people i have around me that support me and the amount of community effort and the amount of community behind behind brand media and behind what we're doing is ridiculous and you know i'm very very grateful i do my best not to take uh, not to take that for you know it just it being there I, I never i never feel that it should be and it, it can disappear tomorrow and it might disappear tomorrow um I, I think that's unlikely but you know i have the approach as if it's going to but the and, the and that's the thing i mean you know when you're being grateful and when you're genuinely grateful for that first yes you become you don't take anything for granted and that's what i think sometimes uh, some photographers can can run into some business owners some some people can run into uh, and, that, and that's when they can start getting hot water when they start taking stuff for granted oh we'll be fine because we've been here for a billion years just because you've been here for a billion years doesn't mean you're going to be here tomorrow you're only here tomorrow if you put in the effort today that's it that's the only reason why the things that you know the things that i'm setting up now are for september october and november this year just to give clarity we're, we're we're towards the middle of the summer right now in regards to filming this so i'm setting up august you know august and september and october i'm setting up those months now i'm not it's not you know and the same when it was like you know in the spring i was setting up summer and then in the summer i'm setting up the next month and so on because it takes time especially when you're dealing with larger projects or video production in general takes time but also as you grow as a business owner your roles are going to change how many roles you have and what roles you have and how deep those roles go also are going to change i mean I don't know the answer to this question, but I kind of do and I kind of don't. I mean, do you, like in an ideal world, like 
would you just want to do photography for a living? Is that the career you want? Is it like a mix of both? You always want it as a sideline thing? Because some people say, actually, I don't want to have it as a full-time thing because I feel it's going to hurt the love I have for it. I think I think it can do that depending on who you are, but I think it's also your approach and how you and how you go about it and and you know, it's about whether you still have personal projects or not. I think is that is the, is the key there. But yeah, you know, let me throw back to you and sort of hear your. I'm curious on your thoughts on like where you want to go in the respect to like your own your own business development. Like, do you want to do you want to build yourself your own brand? Like, you want to you want to do your own thing? Like, you want to you know? I know there's potential that you could be working with us eventually and and etc. As well, you know, and there is definitely potential there. But you know. As I said to you at the start, and as I said to many other people, never rely on what people say, rely on their actions, right? Because I said to you up front, I'm like, right now I have nothing for you, you know, and that's and that's still not true, and that's still true to the day. Um, there will be a world where I do, right? I can see that, you can see that, but at this moment right now, I don't. So, you know, what what's your, you know, let's wind the clock forward six months to a year. Where do, where do you want to be? What you know? Where are you going to be content with? Where are you going to be happy with? Where are you going to be like, yes, I smashed it. If if you're there, where's that? Where's that benchmark for you? I think um, throughout like the progression of like my photography and like kind of understanding, yes, this is what I want to do. Which, by the way, photography, one hundred percent, this is what's going to pay the bills like every month. You know what I mean? Um, and on the subject, really quickly to sidetrack of. Um, would that damage the um the love for it and like the passion? Like, will it become like, oh, I've got to get out of bed and like go and take this phone and I've got to edit and I've got to sleep and I've got to do it the next day? I'm, I wouldn't say I've had that necessarily, but I think because as a group, like, I, I'm not going to speak for Sam when I'm just purely speaking for myself. Like, over the summer, we went. We were, if yeah, I'd use the, the word like relentless. We were just day in, day out on it. And when that hike finished, summer was over. Like, I'm not even going to include in like the whole COVID situation. It's like just purely when I ended, it was like I shut the door, I sit down, I'm at home. Where am I going to go now? And I think that I'm really glad that I'd experienced that early on. So I'm like, I'm, I'm like you said. Like I'm already planning out. Like I know exactly where I want to be. Um, in a, a year's time, honestly, I'm not too. I haven't got anything like solidified. Like yes, this is where I'm going to be. But as a outside of photography, as like a person, the choices that I'm making now for my own development as like an individual is something I've been focusing on, and then. Just that naturally, like, I am a photographer. So as long as I'm, like, even if it's developing myself, I'm still, like, okay, how can I apply this, like, the way I look at photography or, like, the way I look at my brand. And I think, like I said, like, the major project, like, that's for the future. Who knows when that's going to happen? If it doesn't happen, then, oh, well, what am I going to do? Like, you just said now, like, yeah, there is possibly a world where we could be working together. You said you have nothing now, and it's like, well, I'm not going to sit around and like wait because if that day doesn't come, I'm going to be like, well, what have I been doing for like six months? It's like, no, I'm going to be doing like this. I'm going to be getting up now. I'm going to be doing car photography, doing product shoots, doing mini projects. Like, and I think as long as, even if it's little goals, like a goal achieved is still a goal. Like, even if it's okay, so I want five shoots of cars this time next year like 100% I'll be achieving that like four times over hopefully but it's like but I've still got that in it as long as you focus on okay well I've achieved this so like let's raise the bar a little bit and if you want to go mental and raise the bar to like you know the scene and then do that but it's like work towards it you're gonna yeah exactly i mean you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have days like that right like you're gonna have days where you push the bar five percent ten percent etc right but they're like extraordinary days as long as every single day you you push it one percent doesn't matter because you're still after 300 and whatever days you're 300 percent higher than you were 
right? So that's what people don't necessarily understand. I would rather push the bar 1% every single day and never have a 10% day ever, but be consistent at 1% every single day for the rest of my life. Because the thing is, you need to think about stamina, right? And consistency. And that's what I said to anyone who's like, because a lot of people when you start out and when you when you grow, and I don't blame them for this, it's normal, right? They're going, oh yeah, it's a kid with a dream. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Colin, you'll never get there. Yeah, yeah, Colin, yeah, fine, all right. You know, and you get there and it's like, and then people realize, oh, 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 okay. Uh, oh, right. Okay. He's serious. Okay. So, uh, like, oh, he's serious. Okay. <laughs> you know, but it's like the only reason, the only way you're going to get there, as I said, like building off what I was talking about a little bit earlier about discipline. The only reason why you, you know, and, 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 and any youthful people or anyone starting out in their career, develop discipline, don't develop motivation. The one thing that will always serve you, whether you want to, to be a photographer, a videographer, a fashion designer, a, a pro dancer, a pro skater, a pro, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, have discipline, right? Everyone uses the gym analogy, but it's a good analogy to you. That's why everyone uses it. You don't expect to get a six pack over three days, right? You expect to get a six pack by consistently working on your core and consistently working out for months, and months and months it's the same with business it's the same with anything you know fitness is a part of that yes you should look after yourself yes you need to look after yourself that doesn't mean being in the gym every day right that doesn't mean that at all if you're not a gym person go on a run go on a walk go, do be be active get out and move that's the point there it's not you have to go and weight lift right some people enjoy weightlifting, right? Fine, go and weightlift. If you want to get better at photography or you want to get better at your craft or you want to get better at etc., then go and do it more. You know, you want to get better at business, okay, put yourself in business-related conversations with people who are either forward ahead in business or that are running businesses. As I say, do all... Just It's just trial and error. It's just asking over and over and over again, not to the same people, but to different people and every time slightly change your approach. And then you'll find out what works. Now, there's a massive comfort barrier there, though, because you're not going to enjoy it. You're going to be like, oh, oh, this doesn't feel good. Oh, this doesn't feel good. But that's normal. Go through it. And that's what I'm saying. Push yourself, mentally, physically, or whatever it is, to move yourself forward. And don't rely on anyone else either, right? Rely on what you will do and what you will put in. It's about understanding your controllables, right? Like when COVID happened, for example, at the very start, like most business owners at the start, I went... Well, bye. Have fun. Uh, it was a good. T- it was a good time. Um, you know, and I did, and I went on a. Uh, you know, it was a good week and a half. I just didn't work because I was like, well, I can't. <laughs> it's a le- literally illegal to do video production. I can't do anything. And then all I said to myself was, and I, I know I've used this story a lot, but it's a good story I think to 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 really iron out why what you need to do sometimes is on 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 April the first you're going to go back to work. At that time I had no idea what I wanted to do, what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. But then what happened was when you said I'm going to work and I'm not going to just feel sorry for myself, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this, I'm only going to rely on me. I then built all of the strategy, all of the structure, all of the thing. I found a way to continue to do video production and continue to create content. We let into the podcast we did things that could better me and i was always looking for the day when video production could come back so we could come back stronger so we could do so i had a better skill set so what could i do today that was going to help me in tomorrow next month next year so on you know so you know whenever anyone says they're going to do something as long as unless they follow up with action don't take them at their word because and it's nothing against them it's nothing against anything like that but the fact of the matter is you you wake up with yourself every day you go to sleep with yourself every day right you're the only person in the world who has been there for you every single day so rely on yourself that's it rely on yourself and only yourself if other factors happen in your life with other people and other factors happen this is in personal relationship professional relationship any relationship then that's fine that's life right but that's actually none of your business right because that's life. That's li- life happens, right? And the thing is, once you understand that and you're okay within yourself, you'll still get up every day and you'll still be motivated or quote-unquote motivated or have the discipline to do it, whatever, etc. however you want to d- describe it. And I mean, for me, it's one of those things like you, you either really, really want it or you don't. Because I can give you all the knowledge in the world, but unless you're going to take the action, you won't, you won't get there. You just won't. No, it's simple as that. You just won't because it, there's... <laughs> Reward happens after you take consistent, concise action on moving towards your goals that's 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 where your goals come from the the 
chipping away those little meaningful projects those little personal projects that you're doing that push your boundary of what you can do creatively that could be photography that could be video that could be whatever it, is, it doesn't matter it could be a painting it could be trying to run run 100 meters faster than you did before trying to run further than you did before you know all of these are potential goals that you could have right like and as well it's about establishing a goal mindset and a growth mindset but you know i mean i could talk about this for forever but i mean let me sort of throw back to you i mean i don't really have many like anything else i really wanted to cover today um so i really appreciate the time but i like to throw in on the end uh, a chance for you to ask me a question or ask, or throw in a topic for us to discuss for a couple of minutes before we before we really wrap up and sort of see where you know the, the end of this conversation goes so let me throw it back to you um something i did want to cover which is i guess it kind of ties in with what we've been talking about so. i'm going to say something and there's like two ways you can look at it that i'd like to explain i cannot fail i can't i just and yes people can be like oh well that's not really the healthiest the thing, like no, in terms of like just. So, sorry to cut you off, but there's there, there, there's two there's two phases in life. Number one, you're learning. Number two, you're successful. That's it. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is something which we frame it as failure because we feel like it's something that we will continue to do or we can't overcome. Failure is something. It's not failure if you can overcome it because then it's a learning opportunity, right? I used to say it when I used to work at Greg's all the time. There's no such thing as a problem. There's only problem solving opportunities because that's what it is. You either see it as a problem, something you cannot overcome, something you cannot solve, something you cannot, you know, COVID was a massive problem, right? If it's a problem for you, it's something you can't overcome, right? If it's if it's a problem-solving opportunity or a challenge, it means it might be a difficult thing to overcome, but it's something you can overcome, right? So you're completely right. You will, There's no such thing as failure. It doesn't exist. In my opinion, it doesn't exist. I guess in another way of like, Kind of like putting that, I guess. And I know exactly what I want to achieve. And I, yeah, I, I just, I have to do it. And I know exactly what I have to do. And it's just about getting on it. And again, like, if, even if I wake up tomorrow and think, yeah, I, I don't want to do photography, I'll do, I'll be a chef or I'll fly a plane or, you know, then as long as I know 100% know this is what I'm going to do, then. And I think this is for like other people listening as well. But like, if there's something you want to do and you put like a hundred percent into it, and you genuinely really want to do it, even if you change your mind, you've still achieved so much, and you have like that skill that you're going to take with you for your rest of your life. And even if you move on to the next thing, like say I move on to being a chef and it doesn't work out, it's like well, okay, but I was mental at photography when I was doing that, and it's like just progressing forwards and yeah i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of crossover skills right like even something simple like communication skills or listening skills or manager skills or etc these are all things which you need to develop for every single role you just described but they're all transferable across all of the roles so and also you know something that we don't necessarily understand is as well you can put 150 percent in every single day but you need to put in in for longer than you think you're going to need to put it in that's the thing that people don't necessarily appreciate when it comes to starting a business or or making a business successful or being good enough at photography because I had this when I started and I had this for good years and years and years. I was like, I was eager. I was like, and I, and I still get it now. I'm like, why am I not where I want to be? Why am I not? Why am I not there? Why am I not there? And I'm being impatient because I'm because I want I want the dwarfine hit. I want this. I want to be able to celebrate it. I want to. But the the fact of the matter is it's a hard load of grinding it's a hard load it's every day it's every single day and if any business owner tells you they don't work every single day they do whether they're actually at work or not doesn't matter if you own a business your brain does not turn off i promise you it does not turn off because you're thinking about those projects or those things and it takes a it can take a lot of discipline it can take a lot of time for you to have a way to switch off but also the question is like do you need to switch off do you want to switch off because the thing is when you're doing things that fill you with fulfillment and confidence and 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 exactly you're hitting every single thing that you need in life then you don't why do you why do you need to stop like people say oh you work so much but what would i what would i be doing if i wasn't doing this there's a there, <laughs> Like this is this is the thing I would do when I wasn't at work. It's now my job, so I can now do it all of the time, right? Now, 
yes, to an extent, you need to be careful with that because otherwise then you'll just push and push and push and push and push yourself out. But there's a difference in understanding and listening to your body and saying we physically need to stop now because we are physically fatigued or mentally fatigued. That's fine. But And then saying, actually, no, I'm really fired up. I'm really doing this. And that's just about balance. That's just about having balance in your life, right? Like... The only thing, the thing is, you'll never really burn out as long as you're not sacrificing sleep. I'm not saying I never sacrifice sleep, but if you, I'm saying consistency, right? If you're consistently sacrificing sleep and not eating enough and and well enough, I'm not saying eat really, really, really well and that's what you have to do. No, no but if you're like sacrificing right? like physical health. If you're not then... eating at all and then when you do eat, all you're eating is junk food, then yeah, no shit that's why you're going to crash yeah no shit that's why you know look at your caffeine intake when are you having caffeine when are you when are you having a coffee when are you having any drinks when are you having this etc if you struggle with sleeping at night it's probably because you've got caffeine left in your system it takes over 10 hours to for, for to remove caffeine from your system right so if you have a coffee at four in the afternoon which it is right now it will still be in your system at four in the morning right so that's why i don't have coffee after one because i know i need to sleep i want to sleep by 11 right so by doing that i'm allowing my body to get rid of the caffeine in my system that's designed to keep you alive but also you know and i use caffeine as an example but what caffeine does is it takes energy from another part of the day and it gives it to you then it's not giving you extra energy you're just trading it because you have the reason why you have a caffeine crash is because you're taking energy from the afternoon and you're giving it to yourself in the morning now that might that's fine if that's what you need to do right in some cases on shoots i need to wake up really early and i need to have lots of energy until about one of a, one o'clock okay great fine so i'll have caffeine then because i need the kick from six in the morning through till midday right but then i'm also aware that it's going to have a knock-on effect to my afternoon's worth of work because i've just traded me having a really productive morning to now not having a, a full productive day your body is designed, as long as you eat healthily or roughly healthily and you drink enough water and you have enough sleep, to consistently give you energy throughout the day. The time when it gets thrown off is when you're starting to fill it with sweets, high, high levels of sugar, high levels of caffeine, high levels of etc. Right? That's when the issues come. But again, moving back to like the fulfillment aspect of it, the fulfillment aspect comes when you do what you're fulfilled with and if your value is, or one of your top values is being fulfilled. That's why, you know why you do what you do and if you if your job allows you to have a fulfillment like me knowing i'm helping sam and will grow and i'm helping the team like actually be able to fund their life and actually pay for their living is a level of fulfillment for me because i and that's the motive i don't need motivation then to get up and find the work for them because i'm doing it for them i'm not doing it for me right because i know that yeah okay maybe they're not relying on me maybe that's the wrong word but Part of it is they are relying on me to an extent, right? Because a percentage of their income... No, if I don't give them anything, and I've said to them, there'll be some months where I don't. But that's not the point. The, the point is that, to an extent, they are relying on me, whether they believe that or not, because they are they, they have a certain characteristic. They know the kind of money they're making, etc., 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 because I've those agreements in place, and I've said that it's likely it's going to stay that way. This podcast is a key example. For Sam and Will, this is a consistent money maker for them, because... I don't want to edit it. It's not that I don't want to. I can. It's just it's not a good use of my time. Me having a podcast is extremely valuable. Me editing a podcast, not so valuable. That's why I outsourced it. Right? And that's why they do it for us now. You know, but I mean, where... I mean, is there anything else you want to talk about before we before we sign off, sign off? No, I think... No, I think it's been a pretty good conversation. And there's, like, nothing really... I haven't got really any, any questions or anything, so... Okay. Yeah, if there was one thing to end on, it would just be like, if there's something you enjoy, just, just do it. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, action. Action is the key. Uh, I mean, if you go take anything from this podcast and you have sat through 50 minutes of it, first, congratulations. But secondly, you know, act. Action is the only thing that's going to allow you to do whatever it is. You want to learn to drive? Okay, get lessons booked in. Okay, you want to you want to learn a new skill? Okay, how what actions are you taking? Is it by a course? Is it talk to someone who has the skill? You want to get better at photography? Go get your phone. Go start taking photos. Um, you want to get better at taking videos? You want to be better at 
performing videos, you want to be better at talking on video, okay, start talking on video, etc. Anything you want to do, start executing on that, and then you'll be in a position where you'll be better in it. But don't check in with yourself every week to see if you're better. Check in yourself every six months to a year because we're gonna ha- you have one percent, two percent growth every day, and they're minute changes. Like you won't even like in a fitness concept, you won't even see how your body's changing because you look at your body every day. But someone who hasn't seen you in six months will go fucking hell. You you were like this because they have their perception of when they last saw you, and then it won't connect with when they see, when they see you again, right? So so if you're going to take away anything, that's something to take away. But Blake, where can people find you if they want to see some of your work, talk to you about shooting, talk about advice, just 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 you know have that creative conversation, continue that creative conversation outside of this podcast? Uh, it would be on my Instagram, which is camera shy, uh twenty twenty. Um, yeah, I do have YouTube, but you know you'll find it in comments you know, So yeah, I invite anyone to ask anything. You know, I'll be here to to talk and give my opinions and advice and stuff like that. So yeah, fantastic. So thank you so much. Mm, no, thank you. Yeah, it's been really fun. Thanks so much, ladies and gents. I hope you did enjoy that little interview with myself and Blake. Uh, it was great to sort of be able to showcase him and showcase and talk about him and what he does and how he does it and why. And uh, yeah, just to catch up with him mostly, but also to hopefully help you on your journey in creativity and uh, etc. So thank you so much for coming back once again. I will see you next week on Wednesday again for a brand new video and a brand new podcast. And uh, yeah, hope you're well. Hope you're going to Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you very, very soon.